Hey everyone, it's Colin, how's it going? Most people would recognize a Texas Instruments graphing calculator as a tool used to get through math class in school. But these otherwise boring devices have long lived a secret life, filled with a rich history of handheld gaming. And the latest generation of calculators is able to do something few would expect. The first graphing calculator from Texas Instruments was the TI-81, which made its debut in 1990. With a 96 by 64 pixel monochrome screen and 2 MHz processor, it wasn't terribly advanced by any means. But one feature it included caught the attention of those interested in computing. The ability to write your own programs in BASIC. In practice, programming for the TI-81 was pretty limited because the calculator lacked any way of transferring data to or from other devices, all programs had to be keyed in by hand. Because of that, there was relatively little effort put into trying to write programs in assembly, which would otherwise allow direct access to the calculator's hardware and take full advantage of its otherwise meager performance. Typing in all that code by hand and finding a way to trick the calculator into running it would simply be too tedious. But in 1992, TI introduced a new model that changed things, the TI-85, which in addition to being three times more powerful, included a serial port for transferring data. You could connect two calculators together directly to send files, or use a GraphLink cable to exchange data with a PC or Mac. And that was enough to start a whole community of calculator hackers. The TI-85 still only offered BASIC as a programming language running within the confines of the calculator's operating system. But in 1994, it was discovered that by carefully modifying the contents of a backup file and restoring it to the device, one could get the TI-85 to execute arbitrary code. By November of that year, a piece of software named Z-Shell was released, which allowed users to easily launch programs written in assembly. A variety of programs went on to become available, all written by enthusiasts and shared freely over the internet. Some were practical for math or engineering use, but one particular kind of program seemed to gather more attention than the rest. Games. Texas Instruments wasn't thrilled about this, and as it developed the replacement for the TI-81, which would be known as the TI-82, the company sought to find and fix bugs that could be exploited the same way as in the TI-85. It was somewhat successful in its efforts, as the TI-82 was launched in 1993, and it took until 1997 for enthusiasts to develop an assembly shell. But at some point, TI seemed to realize that allowing assembly programming would actually be beneficial if for no other reason than to make it easier for the company to offer its own applications for the platform. The TI-83, which launched in 1996, was the first model with official assembly support, though the feature wasn't initially advertised. Subsequent models made it progressively easier to write software in assembly, though TI never made much available in terms of documentation. Enthusiasts still had to pull a lot together on their own, but the time period of the late 90s still managed to become a bit of a golden era in calculator gaming. Some were recreations of well-known titles like Tetris, while others were original to the platform. Websites like TICalc.org sprung up to provide information, host software downloads, and spur community discussion. The programming scene continued to grow and flourish, taking advantage of hardware improvements and new models, as well as Texas Instruments' seemingly hands-off attitude towards their extracurricular activities. But in 2007, things changed suddenly with the launch of a whole new calculator lineup called the Inspire series. It was a radical departure from the simple interface of previous models, with an app-based GUI and the concept of performing calculations within documents. It had a file browser and later models included backlit color screens and rechargeable batteries. 
On some units, the directional pad was even touch sensitive for moving a cursor around on screen, and wireless networking was now an option. The biggest change, though, was the underlying hardware. Previous TI calculators like the TI-83 and 85 used Z80 processors, and a few like the TI-89 and 92 saw an upgrade to the Motorola 68000. But Inspire was based on ARM CPUs, which were dramatically more powerful. This got enthusiasts' attention in a big way. Instead of having to tediously write compact, highly efficient code to run on underpowered hardware, they could now have the freedom to port over existing ARM-based software. Texas Instruments threw a curveball with the Inspire series, though. Assembly support was nowhere to be found. Inspire models only allowed running programs written in BASIC or scripted in a language called Lua. Calculator enthusiasts were stuck, but just like they had over a decade prior with the TI-85, they set to work, trying to unlock the secrets of the new platform. And sure enough, by 2010, an exploit was found and jailbreak software called Endless was released. It included a software development kit that allowed for writing applications not just in assembly, but also C and C++. But Endless also kicked off a cat and mouse game with Texas Instruments. The company hadn't simply decided to lock down the Inspire platform, it had an ongoing initiative to keep it locked down. Subsequent operating system updates brought new features to compel users to upgrade, but they also fixed the bugs that Endless relied on to work. After each release, a new bug would be found, but in due time, Endless would get updated to work again. Installing the jailbreak is very easy. Just download the version appropriate for the operating system on your calculator, then copy the files over through USB. Running the program installs the jailbreak in just a couple of seconds. The only caveat is that it's non-persistent, so you need to rerun the program every time the Inspire boots up. So far, Endless hasn't seen quite the popularity as did programming for TI's original calculator lineup, but it's still amassed a respectable collection of apps, over 160 as of July 2019. And sure enough, a large number of them are games. Some are direct clones of existing games, like Crafty, which resembles Minecraft. But due to the Inspire's improved performance, many apps are emulators for console game systems, such as Pico Drive for Sega Genesis ROMs, Pocket SNES for Super NES games, and GPSP, which plays Game Boy Advance titles. As is usually the case with emulators, they can be hit or miss in terms of playability. Pocket SNES has a very low frame rate, at least on my Inspire CX CAS model, and GPSP is only a bit better, though it does manage to be playable. The perennial question for any jailbroken device is, can it play Doom? Normally this is asked as a joke, but with Endless, the answer is, well, yes, because someone ported it. And it actually works quite well despite the calculator's somewhat clunky controls. But what's perhaps even more interesting than Doom is Mini VMAC, which, as its name suggests, emulates a Mac Plus running System 7. And it's not just a recreation of the desktop environment, it's a real OS installation. The touchpad-equipped Inspire models can even use it to move the cursor around on screen, and you can launch programs, one of which turns things meta pretty quickly. Newer hardware revisions to the Inspire CX and CX CAS models have a different screen type, and not all applications have been updated to work with it. Endless added a compatibility mode to try to support these apps, but it doesn't always work. My own Revision W calculator will play Truxton in Pico Drive just fine, along with Sonic 2. But it'll spontaneously reboot when firing up Quake, because, yeah, someone ported that too. So, older Inspire models offer the best compatibility, while the new CX2 series doesn't work with Endless at all. Or at least, not yet.
While the Inspire models offer better performance than their predecessors, it's worth noting that their specifications still pale in comparison even to something like a 5-year-old smartphone. And many have questioned why their meager hardware still commands such high prices. But to the calculator hackers, that doesn't necessarily matter. The challenge of just getting their software to work seems to be what drives them. In the almost 30 years since their debut, Texas Instruments graphing calculators went from being simple math tools to a different kind of educational platform, getting people to code. No doubt at least a few who got their start writing simple games to play during class were inspired to become professional software developers. And while we've come full circle in TI's attitude towards allowing those to do what they want with their devices, one thing is as clear as it's ever been. Where there's a will, there's a way. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at thisdoesnotcomp. And as always, thanks for watching.